Hello, Michael, Coop Instruments, and this is my latest project, the Melodicade MX. A teensy microcontroller powered, velocity sensitive MIDI keyboard and synthesizer with 3D printed case, chassis, and keycaps. Built using inexpensive Cherry MX compatible mechanical key switches and all off the shelf parts. Hookups for sustain pedals, USB and serial MIDI, and onboard synth audio out. An OLED display with rotary encoder driven menu interaction dual position pitch bend and modulation buttons, pots for real-time MIDI CC, a built-in looper with overdub channel selection, and a unique button layout, which we will discuss in a moment. The unorthodox key layout is an arrangement known as Wiki Hayden, named after Swiss inventor Kaspar Wiki, who patented it in 1896 for use with the Bandonian, and Brian Hayden, an English concertinist who independently discovered and also patented the layout in 1986. It's actually one of many so-called isomorphic or generalized key layouts, which arrange musical intervals so that scales and chords conform to the same shapes and patterns regardless of which key they are played in. This greatly reduces the learning curve and also allows for easy improvisation and accompaniment while staying in a desired key. For example, Because we have two dimensions available to us, rather than one, as with traditional piano, note buttons can be packed more efficiently into a smaller space. Piano players can often reach a tenth or an eleventh with one hand, but how about a thirty-second? This allows for one-handed playing of root notes and chords that would be physically impossible on a traditional piano keyboard. For example, As mentioned previously, chords conform to the same shapes regardless of which key they are played in. For example, here's the shape of a major chord and a minor chord. With these two shapes alone, we can already play accompaniment for this. Because the note intervals are the same, regardless of where they are played on the instrument, transposing into a different key is as simple as starting on a new root note. 
For example, here is the verse section of the Wellerman in four different keys. A quick demonstration of the menu system as it stands in February 2022. Instrument selection is stored per channel for quick toggling between patches, especially helpful when overdubbing tracks with the looper. It's currently configured for standard general MIDI level 1, but I've included GM2 and a handful of popular sound font program lists in the code. This will very likely be a selectable option in future builds. Here we have device mode selection. Normal sends note data only for the currently selected channel. Next we have options for instrument layering between channel pairs. Here channel 0 is set to acoustic grand piano and channel 1 slow string ensemble. With device mode set to layer, the two channels will play simultaneously. Split mode breaks the deck into top and bottom sections with the same channel pairing. Next, we have auto sustain, which currently just holds sustain for three seconds after the last key is released. This may be replaced with a different functionality in future builds. I included it because some instrument patches benefit from the effect. Finally, we have the onboard synth mode, which I will now demonstrate. So as you can see, we are plugged into the internal 3.5mm audio out jack. However, synth mode does still pass MIDI data, so we can see the key input on the monitor. Currently, this is configured with a short and long variation of each of the waveforms available in Teensy's audio library. Here is sine wave. Those of you old enough to remember landline telephones might recognize this, or this. Next we have sawtooth wave, square wave, triangle wave, variable triangle wave, pulse wave, and finally switching to the drums channel outputs noise. The synth is tied into both the pitch bend functions 
and modulation, which rapidly cycles the waveform on and off to create a fast ARP-like sound. It's also tied into the looper with the same multi-channel overdub functionality. Pedal mode selection defaults to sustain, but can also be used as a trigger for the looper or to apply a MIDI control change, which is useful for instruments with a wah-wah pedal, etc. Next we have pitch transposition, again per channel. This is most useful for the layer or split modes as it allows further customization of sounds for the layer mode or, for instance, access to lower bass notes for the split mode. Finally, we have the looper activated by the red button in the lower left corner of the deck. Pressing the button primes the looper for recording, and the instant the first note button is pressed, the loop starts. Press the button again to close the loop, lock the current channel, and start playback. Overdub recording remains enabled on the other tracks until recording is toggled off by pressing the red button again. Finally, hold it for one full second to stop the looper. I bought a weighted 88 key piano for Christmas in 2018 and made a resolution to actually learn how to play it, but progress was slow and I quickly began to lose interest. Around this same time, I saw a video of a Yanko piano being played and decided that this looked a lot more fun than practicing scales. After failing to modify a cheap MIDI keyboard for the Yanko layout with 3D printed keys, I went down a rabbit hole of alternative keyboards and discovered the now discontinued Axis 49. I had some experience customizing fight sticks, so I decided to try creating my own axis using arcade buttons instead. While researching, I found multiple form posts from people attempting to modify their axis keyboards for the Wiki Hayden layout. I purchased an iPad app named Musics Pro that allows for experimentation with various note layouts and discovered that I vastly preferred Wiki Hayden as well. I started development in early 2019, barely knowing what I was doing, but having fun regardless. Arcade buttons worked great, and I tore apart several design revisions before settling on the original Melodicade. I was content to play this and its sister instrument turned add-on deck, the Harmonicade, for the better part of the next year. However, I was becoming increasingly dissatisfied with the lack of velocity detection and was also never happy with the cost of this project. So when my son built a mechanical keyboard in late 2020, I purchased a couple hundred additional switches to see if cheap switches with 3D printed keycaps could work as a viable alternative. It turns out that they can, and with key switches running nearly one-tenth the cost of arcade buttons, I decided to start prototyping with these instead. 
I made a number of attempts to add velocity detection via cheap tact switches, DIY reed switches, and even stacking pairs of mechanical key switches, but nothing was easy enough to create or worked reliably. I eventually took a chance on the lowest activation force tact switches I could find on Mauser, and they actually work quite well. Encouraged by the success of this prototype, I eventually built another, and then another while simultaneously writing a build guide which I'm releasing now, in hopes that it helps set someone else down a path of their own creativity. For me, it's been an amazingly rewarding hobby.